Welcome. I'm Erin Hill, and I am currently the weed diagnostician at Michigan State University in the Department of Plant, Soil, and Microbial Sciences. I want to talk to you today about some of the work that I've done with Dr. Christy Sprague on planting green, looking at a cereal rye cover crop with soybeans planted into it uh, during my time as the cover crop specialist at the university. So what is planting green? Well, planting green is when you plant a cash crop into a live cover crop. Um, that cover crop may be standing, as is depicted here on the left, or it could be one that has been recently roller crimped, as we see here on the right. Either way, that would be considered planting green. There are some potential advantages of planting green that we were aiming to look at. Um, some of those, including erosion control, moisture retention, the potential for weed suppression, increased crop diversity, and also with that, potentially increased microbial and insect diversity, the building of soil organic matter and structure, reduced compaction, and also the potential to um, retain some of the nutrients in that system. Now, there are also some potential disadvantages of planting green that we need to consider. Um, it can create a diff difficult planting conditions by physically having a cover crop there for the planter to go through. Um, there is the potential for reduced soil moisture, as has been seen um, with cover crops in the western states of the U.S. Um, there's also the potential to delay cash crop emergence if it creates cool soil temperatures or re even reduce cash crop emergence um, through potential allelopathy or insect or other pest issues such as the seed corn, maggot, or slugs. Certain cover crops like cereal rye, which is a, a grass with a high C to N ratio, also has the potential to reduce nitrogen availability. And if the cover crop is left there too long and uh, produces seed, then we could have volunteer cover crops that act as weeds later on. Um, we can also potentially have some issues with that residue on the surface of reducing soil contact with our pre-emergence herbicides. So these are all things that we wanna consider. Uh, the current recommendation for utilizing cover crops before a cash crop, such as cereal rye before soybeans, is to terminate that cereal rye when it is 18 inches or less in height, wait one to two weeks, and then go ahead and plant your soybeans. So that's what we have depicted here. Now what we're trying to test as a new idea with planting green is are two different things. One would be terminating and planting at the same time. So here you see the day we run the planter through that cover crop, we're also going to terminate it. And then eventually you have your soybeans coming up into a dying cover crop. Um, and here we're using the example of doing this when the, the cereal rye has reached the stage feek six and a half, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You could even push the envelope a little bit further and plant into standing rye and then terminate that rye even later, so beyond the planting date. So if you plant at FEEX 6.5, you could wait to terminate potentially till FEEX 9 or later, allowing that cover crop more time to accrue biomass, which might help with things like weed suppression. So in this case, you're seeing that you have uh, the soybeans coming up in competition with the rye. So we really want to examine that and see if that can cause potential problems. So there were three objectives to these two experiments uh, that we conducted over the past three years. The first was to look at cereal rye termination timing in relation to soybean planting. And we were really looking to maximize weed control and we wanted to see how the soybeans performed in these uh, uh, cover crop situations under a no-till uh, system. The second objective was to determine the best termination method for the cereal rye. So there are a couple options and we wanted to put those to the test as well. And then the third objective was to look at the impact of fertilizing the rye on soybean production and weed suppression. So if we give a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer at the time of spring green up for the rye, we were hoping to accrue more biomass and hopefully accentuate certain things like weed suppression. These experiments were all conducted uh, in East Lansing, Michigan and our university farms. And we used uh, cereal rye, the variety or cultivar Wheeler, um, which was drilled into corn the fall before the soybeans were planted. So uh, most of the time this was early to late November. So this would be after the corn is harvested. We went in and drilled the, the uh, cereal rye. And we slowly upped our planting rates for the rye each year from 90 all the way up to 120 
pounds per acre. Um, with planting so late, we really wanted to make sure we had good establishment of the rice, so we were up over a little over two bushels per acre. We also left some areas that we did not plant to cereal rye to make um, controlled comparisons to during the study. Now to look at weeds and weed suppression, we wanted to make sure that we had a very even population of weeds out there, which is not always the case um, in our farm fields. So we actually added weed seeds to the seed bank in permanent quadrats or squares that were marked by flags. We overwintered the seed and we spread that just prior to soybean planting. So the species we were really interested in looking at were horseweed or mare's tail, which we know we have a lot of um, issues with glyphosate resistance in the state. Um, we also looked at common ragweed, Powell amaranth, and giant foxtail. In addition to these four species where we added the weed seeds, we also looked at the common land squatters native population because that seemed to be very uniform across all of these fields in all three years that we did the studies. Uh, the plots were maintained weed free after we terminated the rye using glyphosate. So as I will tell you in just a minute, we were using Roundup Ready 2 soybeans so we could use glyphosate without injuring the soybeans and we could take out the weeds except for in these quadrats where we were looking at emergence. So those Roundup Ready 2 soybeans that we used were a maturity 2.0 and they were planted in 30 inch rows and the um, seeding rate was around 153,000 plants per acre. This was a randomized complete block design with four replications and each of the objectives was repeated over two years of time. There was an overlap in that second year of these two experiments. So in total, these two experiments span three years. So for experiment one, we were looking at two soybean planting times, one that we're going to call on time, which was early to mid-May. And we were planting this when the rye was at FIG 6.5, so between the first and second visible node. And the second soybean planting time was late May, which was FIGS 9, which is when you first start to see the flag leaf of rye. So you can see that depicted here um, in the diagram below that FIGS 6.5 is between 6 and 7, so um, first and second visible node. FIGS 9 is then when the flag leaf is visible. So with these two planting times, we looked at four different termination treatments. We had some plots that had no cover crop, as I mentioned earlier, and then we had three termination timings, 6.5, FIX 9, and then FIX 10.5, which is when the rye reaches the point of flowering. We also were looking at termination methods in experiment one. Uh, of course, in the no cover plots, we did not need a termination method, but where we did have rye, we were comparing um, spraying the rye to kill it with glyphosate or Roundup, um, spraying plus mowing, or mowing alone. Um, which was used for some of the later termination timings, seeing if we could avoid uh, using a herbicide to terminate the cover crop. For the second experiment, we decided to pare it down to one soybean planting time. So we used the online or the on time planting time, which was uh, mid May or that FIX 6.5. So it was really important to use stages of rye versus heights of rye because. Rye doesn't always reach the same height each year, but it does pretty consistently go through all of the stages um, here. So we looked at just the one soybean planting time. Again, the same um, four termination time treatments, no cover, 6.5, 9, and 10.5. And then here, instead of looking at termination method, we were looking at adding a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer at spring green up to the rye. So we were either adding no fertilizer, 20 pounds or 40 pounds at that time. We also did that in the no cover treatments too, so we weren't um, compounding any factors there. All of the rye in experiment two was terminated using uh, glyphosate spray only or Roundup spray only. So for these two experiments, we collected quite a bit of data. Um, for all of them, we looked at the rye biomass, height and growth stage at the time of termination. We looked at some measures in the soil, um, focusing on the temperature, both at planting and later on at V2, and soil moisture at planting, at soybean V2 and R1. And then for the weeds, we looked at total emergence by species in those quadrats. And we also looked at percent suppression in 2018, the final year of the study. 
Um, so when we were measuring emergence for the weeds, we're actually pulling those weeds out of the quadrat so they're not competing with the soybeans throughout the season. We're just looking at what comes up and then taking it out. And then for soybeans, we really wanted to see how planting green impacts soybeans. Um, we looked at, st at stand two weeks after planting. We looked at stage around V2, leaf area, and then ultimately we looked at yield at the end of the season. So now moving on to the results, we found that um, delayed termination timings usually uh, resulted in taller rye and more biomass. So that makes sense, right? We left the rye in there longer and it continued to grow. So this table here is showing you our actual termination dates so that um, one to two visible nodes was usually um, in the 10 to teens of May. Then the first flag leaf here we saw in 2016 was May 23rd. And then rye finally started to flower that last week of May or the first week of June. When you look at the heights, you can see that over time, as we left it in longer, of course the rye um, did get taller, but you can see this is why we didn't decide to do it based on rye height, because the max height we achieved in 2016, or 2017 rather, was um, 25 inches. We never got to 40 inches that we saw in 2016 and 2018. And that really has to deal with the growing season. We also see over when you look at biomass that as you left the rye in there, to um, grow longer that you, of course, accrued more biomass. Continuing to look at the rye, but moving over to the fertility treatments, we saw that if you added 20 to 40 pounds of nitrogen at spring greenup, you did increase the rye biomass by up to 122%. And you can see that depicted here. Um, on the far left, we have zero pounds of nitrogen per acre for the rye all the way up to 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre for the rye. And you can see that the amount of green in that square increases with each of the fertility treatments. So that's showing um, more leaf area and more tillering. But we did not see a difference um, in height among the fertility treatments. So if you terminated at FEEX 9, these three fertility treatments all had a similar height, but they did have increased biomass with increasing fertilization. The other thing we want to talk about for rye was, you know, remember we were interested in termination method and we found that mowing alone did not successfully kill the rye when it was done at FEEX 9 and FEEX 10.5. Um, that would be the same for that FEEX 6.5 stage. Also, we didn't look at that. But the problem here is that the growing point for the rye was below the cutting height for the mower. And so though we did trim off the top, the rye just continued to grow. So without the addition of a herbicide, um, we did not successfully kill the rye and it continued to compete with the soybeans. Moving on to look at the soil, for both experiments we saw no differences in soil temperature or moisture amongst the treatments. So that means that whether we had a cover crop or not, or we had a small cover crop or a big cover crop, it didn't seem to make a difference. Um, in our three years with regard to soil temperature and moisture. So it, it didn't show that the cover crop was making it cooler or tying up moisture. It was performing the same as having no cover crop at all. Now looking at weed emergence. First, we're going to kind of generalize and look at cover crop versus no cover crop. We found that the presence of a cereal rye cover crop, no matter the stage, no matter the biomass, um, did reduce weed emergence. So in the no cover plot, which you can see here on the right, there's no standing rye there, just a little bit of the corn stubble remaining. We saw a season total of 200 weeds per quarter meter squared, which are those little squares out there, that emerged throughout the course of the season. And we compare it to the rye, which again, we averaged across all the treatments, we saw only 122 weeds that emerged throughout the season. So there was um, a significant suppression there. To further look at that, and this is for the um, late planting, terminating at FEEX 9 or FEEX 10 and a half, so flag leaf or flowering, reduced total weed emergence compared with no rye. So this is where we're teasing it out instead of averaging across everything. We still have no rye at 200 weeds um, per quarter meter squared, but then you could reduce that all the way down to only 85 weeds emerging per quarter meter squared if you waited and let the um, rye go to flower. 
Now we saw that in some years, delayed rye termination reduced weed emergence in the um, augmented planting, so where we added weed seed. So with giant foxtail, velvet leaf, and horseweed, we did see that. But if you look, we saw this um, relationship more strongly tied to with our native common lamb squirter population, just because we really had more consistent emergence of, of this weed amongst all the plots and all the years. So we really saw the biggest difference, the biggest potential to suppress this particular weed, common lamb squirters. And we can see that here, um, again, just for this species, common lamb squirters with no rye, we saw 143 emerge in a growing season, and we could reduce that down to 61 that emerged if we let the rye reach um, the point of flowering. Uh, the other thing that's really important, important to point out is that in experiment two, where we were looking at nitrogen fertilizer treatments, we did not see an impact. So even though we had more rye biomass, we did not see that it further reduced weed emergence beyond waiting to those later stages. Now looking at the results for soybean, we saw that stand was reduced by up to 14% when, when rye termination was delayed until the point of flowering. So there was a potential to reduce that population. Um, and we also saw that delayed rye termination after planting slowed the development and reduced leaf area. So this is a picture of our leaf area meter up here. We pick all the leaves off the soybean plant and run them through and it, and it gives us the surface area. Um, and so this is a similar table down here, looking at leaf area on the right, we saw that with no rye, um, we were at 63 centimeters squared, but that was reduced when we left um, soybeans until the point where the rye was flowering to 46 centimeters squared. We also looked at rye staging and saw that um, we could get a reduction in the rye staging. So there was an average of 1.7 um, uh, for those soybeans that were left until the rye was flowering. Now looking at yield, which sometimes is what everybody cares about uh, the most, we saw that for the late May planting, um, so that end of May planting, that waiting until the rye flowered at peaks 10.5 um, did have the potential to reduce yield by up to 13%, which is about 6.5 bushels in this study. But when the soybeans were planted more timely, um, we didn't see any differences in yield uh, that were observed regardless of the termination timing, regardless of the termination uh, uh, method, and regardless of the fertility that was provided to the rye. So if you can get the soybeans in in a timely manner, then you can go ahead and wait and um, achieve those weed suppression benefits. But if you are planting later, then you really wanna consider upping your um, termination timing for the rye so that you don't see any negative impacts on the beans. So some conclusions, I wanna just go over it all again briefly so that it's clear what we saw in our study in Michigan is that um, when the rye is terminated at the time of planting, so you're planting in the same day, um, you're killing it. We did saw no effect on soil temperature or moisture, soybean stand, development, or yield. But we did see the potential to improve weed suppression. So even terminating that same day, we saw a weed suppression benefit. Now, if you're waiting and trying to push the envelope and terminate rye after planting, um, we saw, again, no effect on soil temperature or moisture, and again, the potential to improve weed suppression by having that cover crop there. But um, if you left this, or if you didn't plant until later in the season, we saw the potential to reduce soybean stand development and ultimately yield um, by that percentage, which could be significant. So if you're planting late in the season, you really wanna just go ahead and terminate that rye um, basically as soon as you can at or after planting. Did termination method matter? That was another one of the questions that we had. We found that mowing alone did not sufficiently kill the rye um, at flag leaf or flowering. It also would not have killed it if we had that as a treatment at FEEK 6.5. And so that's not going to be a sufficient termination method for cereal rye. 
we did see that spraying with glyphosate or spraying plus mowing performs similarly. So we didn't see an advantage really to adding mowing in there, but if there is a reason that you want to break up residue, um, we didn't see that it performed any differently than just spraying alone. Uh, the last question, should I fertilize my rye? Well, the nitrogen that we applied at GreenUp, though it did improve biomass, it did not improve weed control or yields consistently in this work. So um, in my mind at this point, that is, is not necessarily going to be beneficial for the amount of money you're going to spend on a nitrogen fertilizer for the rye. So to conclude, I want to thank the funders of this research, which were the Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee, Project Green, and we also had our soybean seed donated by Bayer. And we also had quite the um, research team to help us conduct all of these studies over the course of three years, so thank you to them as well. Uh, and with that, I thank you for your time and listening to uh, Planting Cover Crops Green.